You know, sometimes homilies go around in my mind and then they don't come out exactly as I planned. For a long time, I really didn't understand the Feast of the Ascension. I don't know about you. But somehow or other, it got lost between that wonderful joy of Easter and the excitement of Pentecost. And then when the bishops of our region changed the celebration of the feast day to the Sunday that we celebrate today, the seventh Sunday after Easter, of Easter, I should say, I said, this is crazy. But the more I reflect on it, the more I begin to see that it was a, a good decision for us because it brings the Paschal mystery together. It reminds us that this is a three-event celebration. And this Feast of the Ascension is clearly saying to me, you're on. The Lord Jesus is saying that to you and to all of us. You're on. I'm out of here. You're on. You are now my living body. And don't be gazing upwards when my people are hungering and suffering and lonely, all of those things. When you're called to be sharers of the good news, you must go into the Samarias of today. You must go out to the whole world. And I say, but what am I supposed to do? You do exactly as I'm asking you. You'll never know when the moment presents itself, when you have to share the good news, have to share the gift I gave you. But how do I do that? Jesus says, you're my body. And on this Memorial Day weekend, when we remember the sacrifice of so many men and women in the various wars in our history, we also think of the men and women today who are actually showing us what it is to be in the front lines for the action of Jesus. The front lines. Remember what the Lord says to each one of us. You must have hearts that will see. I'm asking you, have you got a heart that sees with the eyes of Jesus? I was listening this morning to an early news um, sharing, and it was about children who live most of their days in fear of the violence around them and what that does to their little hearts and souls. I was reading this week um, something that I want to share with you. It's from a book that was written by a man who was in the semin seminary with me, and God rest him, he's dead. He is, is a wonderful, wonderful, imaginative writer. And here's what he says. My abiding concern is about the loss of the reassuring invitation of the beckoning God as revealed so unambiguously in the life of Jesus. God beckons us, and the ascension is saying, come here, I have some work for you to do. I want you to remember that you must get out there and do it. Well, we're on lockdown. No, you're on open up time. You must find the pathway that will bring the message of good news by helping other people in any way we can. I get calls all the time from people who just want the comfort of knowing that we are praying for them. The comfort of knowing that we're praying for them. I want to give you another little quote. Like all true teachers, Jesus could recognize the butterfly in a caterpillar. I don't know about you, but sometimes I stop at the level of caterpillar. I was coming down the road the other day, and skateboarding is not 
basically allowed in our parking area because for insurance, for every other reason. And there were two kids who came in um, the exit area on skateboards. And I said, ah, 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 you can't do that. And then one of them said, but Father John, can we just skate a little bit? I'm sure you know what answer I gave. And then the eagle, you could recognize the eagle in an egg and the saint in a sinful human being. That gives me so much consolation that the Lord can recognize the goodness in me, in a sinful human mean, being. And as the sun coaxes the petals of the daisy on a spring morning, so too the love of Jesus reaches into our hearts and coaxes them into more loving and more living because we are the body of Jesus. Jesus said, I'm leaving you, but I'm not. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit, but you now are going to be my wounded hands. You're going to be my compassionate hands. You're going to be my consoling hands. You're going to be my holding hands. You're going to be my comforting hands. And that's what we have to remember. I heard a doctor from a palliative care center speak about a man who was taken off life support. And the family decided he shouldn't suffer anymore. And they brought him to the palliative care center where they were now allowed to gather with him for his final time on this earth. They played his favorite South American music. They told him they loved him. Suddenly, he opened his eyes and he was living again. There are some people who were like that. You and I need to play the music of our faith, the music of love, the music of kindness for all of them. And let me remind you again, as I'm quoting this, my friend, too often we feel small and powerless in our hearts or parts when we're alone at night, when we let down the masks, the front, the brave smile, what we long for is not the precise language of official church speak. We yearn for the warmth, the loving eyes, and the open arms of our Lord. Let him hug you and let us be his representative in doing just that. Virtually, yes, right now, but if, you, if you're in a family, send out those virtual hugs. That is the ascension. Jesus is with us. He is not gone. And boys and girls, I hope you're hearing something. I know many of you are gathered around your television screens or your computers, whatever you're using. But I want you to feel, look, you are here with your, with your friends, your family. Because once we're gathered in the Spirit, we are gathered together. I can look at some of your names. I can look at, I can look at Jake. I can look at Marty. I can look at, at Elizabeth. I can look at Catherine. I can look at each and every one of you and tell you that I love you. That's what Jesus asked you to do, asks me to do, to be comfortable and to be loving. Again, the beautiful gifts of Acts. Do not stand here and keep on looking as to what you should be doing, do it. The beautiful message from Ephesians, see with the eyes of your heart and the beautiful message of the Lord Jesus, go and bring the good news. That's who 